All right, welcome everyone. So we are concluding our uh, series in John, which was uh, third third letter. Uh, we are going to be reading from verse five to fifteen to the close. Who wants to read? Uh, verse five through to fifteen. So you're going to read it, Sharon? Yeah. Okay. And who wants to pray? Well, that's a popular request. That's <laughs> <laughs> Not all right. Yeah, the colours. Okay. All right. So, um, Sharon will read, and Carlos will reluctantly cry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, support and opposition. Beloved, beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God, for they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church, but the Diotrephes, Diotrephes, who, <laughs> who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that, he refuses to work on the brothers, and also stops those who want to, and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil but imitate good whoever does good is from God whoever does evil has not seen God Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself we also add our testimony and you know that our testimony is true final greetings I had much to write to you but I would rather not write with pen and ink I hope to see you soon and we will talk face to face peace be to you the friends greet you Greet the friends each by name. Tell us. Yeah, Louis, thank you so much for getting us together and to listen to your word. May we be blessed as we listen to your word through your love and through the scriptures that we are about to mark in so that we can give you praise and glory for the teaching that you are sharing with all of us. May we follow your steps. And may the Holy Spirit be with us as we open the scriptures and be ready for spiritual food that only can come from your love. We just thank you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, refreshing from last week. What was the what was the critical point? We we spent considerable time on one verse in particular. Verse nine. Verse two. Verse two. Oh, verse two. Oh, yeah. Verse two. So we did a uh, yeah, we did a introduction, and then we we uh, we really just laboured in that uh, those first couple of verses. Uh, so verse two, we spent a lot of time there, and uh, I would say we were convincingly uh, crushed the idea <laughs> that uh, that verse is promising that uh, a believer in Christ can expect to have divine health and divine wealth. There is no such promise in Scripture that offers that anywhere. So that verse, as we said last week, uh, is one of the carrots love to use to proclaim those two things. But uh, I think uh, last week, they as do. I say, they love it. As I said last week, we crushed it, and we will continue to crush that uh, this, this week. So uh, specifically, you'll see uh, in verse... Uh, six is talking of the the missionaries who go out. So uh, we'll first say so five into six, obviously. Uh, so these missionaries, um, they're the strangers also. We see them the brothers and the strangers in verse five. And they testified the love that is of Gaius before the church. Uh, you do well to send them on their journey in a worthy manner of God. So we said last week with verse two. The, uh, essentially what John is saying here to Gaius, to Gaius is to, he, he's wishing him well. He's wishing him that he would, you know, he would be well in health and well 
in soul. So essentially soul is life, well and life. Things will go well for you. Now, within the, under the circumstances, the chances are they, they probably won't uh, because they're living in you know, persecution. So, but nevertheless, he would hope that it would go well for him and it's no different than we would say with a, when greeting and parting, you know, I hope you're well. I hope you have a great week. I hope, you know, safe travel, all that kind of thing. That's what he's saying. So safe journey is what he's saying. Safe journey spiritually and physically. You know, we wish you well. We see uh, the very verse picked up in verse um, 6. He sends them on their journey. So the as Gaius, sent, Gaius sends the missionaries, the travelling missionaries, the strangers, the brothers in Christ, who are endorsed by John, sent by John, on their journey... John is saying the same with Gaia. So as they go on a safe journey, we likewise pray that your journey is also is also um, goes well, that you prosper. Uh, that is, everything goes well. That's all it means. It does not mean that you prosper as in what the carries say, help, love and happiness, all of that kind of stuff. Picked up in verse 7, it takes a little bit further. For they have gone out um, for the sake of the name, that's Jesus, they're proclaiming Christ, Accepting nothing for the Gentiles. So again, it, it, it crushes your idea of help, help and happiness. These um, missionaries have gone out. So they've gone, they're, they're leaving the comfort of their homes. They've gone out accepting no support from the Gentiles. So the Gentiles would be who in this case? Non-believers. Anyone else like Christ, essentially, yeah. So also could be the Gnostics. So they've gone out not accepting any help from the Gentiles. So they've gone out essentially with no money. So, which is really very much uh, what John, uh, what uh, Jesus said rather in Matthew chapter ten, and also in in Luke where uh, John uh, the twenty, John twenty. So it's Luke ten and John twenty, where Jesus says, you know, don't take anything with you. Just go out, and uh, and also likewise, don't try and acquire anything. So the gospel is free. It was freely received. Freely give it. Don't fill your pockets up. Don't hop on a $54 million aeroplane and fly around the place. Not that one. So essentially, you go with nothing and you take nothing from anyone that doesn't receive the gospel. So John now is saying to Gaius, these guys are penniless, you know, effectively. They're not rich, uh, wealthy TV evangelists. They're not taking up big, huge um, offerings and they're not promising that if you give, you're going to get. They're, pre they're preaching the gospel. They're going out for the name of Jesus leaving the comfortable homes, and they're living off the support of the church. They take nothing from the Gentiles, they're living off the support of the church. So that's why John encourages Gaius to continue giving to them. So Paul said something very similar in Romans, he said that he, he requested that when he came and saw the church that they would likewise give to him to continue so he would continue on his journeys so as they as they as the missionaries have departed if it's john that's sending it's likewise john also in john's church who are giving they're the ones sending them they're the ones funding it to some degree but when they get to the next church or wherever it is you're going then the, the brothers there we give them a little more and so and, and keeps them going a little longer and the other thing is too with um in the in the first century in particular uh, when you went to somebody's home, so within the, the faith, even within uh, Judaism, when you went into a town as a stranger, a sojourner, then the brothers would take you in. So it was actually, it was, it was a, you, you'd lose honour if you didn't. It was, it was shameful not to do it, not to show hospitality and generosity. So what that really meant was, if, so um, Tony's a travelling minister, Tony comes here and he's been endorsed by someone I know in particular. Uh, I, I've never met Tony before, but... I know the, I know the person who's endorsing him. On that endorsement, then I receive Tony in my, my home, and what's mine is his. So he has a bed, he has food, he has he has um, safety and security. So that's what's on offer. And then, of course, as then Tony comes here, and then Tony is able Tony ministers freely amongst the church, which would be the house church. And then when Tony's finished here, we send him on his way in a worthy manner, which means we give him some funds to allow him to get to the next place. He goes to the next place and it's rinse and repeat. This is what's happening. So this, that, so that's the context. So in no way does this imply that these, the John is saying to the church, uh, or to Gaius, and then of course, to, you know, the, the characters will say, well, if to Gaius and to me, uh, that God wants me to be 
um, prosper in health and prosper in, in, in wealth. As in, God's going to meet all my all, all of my needs and all of my all of my wants and everything that I every, everything that my heart desires, essentially, specifically in light of health, wealth, and happiness. Does not mean that. Not even close. Not on your best day. All right. Anybody want to question that? Want to want to challenge it? I think we can go further if you like on that. For a long, long time ago, I went to a Joyce Michael Oh dear. Well, scripture was well, Joyce. There was a double baptism after the service. <laughs> <laughs> it was a day of soul prospering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so soul here simply means life. Simply means life. It's my confession. Yeah, yeah. Okay, repentance. You're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> you've confessed publicly and publicly you've been forgiven. There you go. All right. So, so yeah, it's 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 a it's a, it's a real favourite with the the carrots. Uh, you'll find books written on it. It's um nonsense. Okay, so carrying on. Uh, so we can see here that. Um, also with um, John um, wishing that all would go well for his friends. So what, what he's essentially saying there is he's, he, he's um, praying that God, that Gaius would have God's favour. And so that's with the greeting, but you also see this picked up uh, further down. So verse 7. Um, so verse 7, again, for the for, or first, first 6 going to 7. So uh, testify, Villa, for the church. Um, you do well to send them on their journey in a worthy manner. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. So John is saying to Gaius, you know, I want to pray this prayer of favour over you, that all would go well. Uh, and he's further supporting that by saying, when you... When you send out the the, uh, the missionaries, the strangers in this case, not even known to him, then if you send them out in a worthy manner, then basically that attracts the favour of God. So what we see here is is hospitality and generosity. So they're gifts, right? They're spiritual gifts. Hospitality and generosity. So Romans talks about, well, John, um, Paul talks about it in Romans, the spiritual gifts, um, and also in Corinthians. We'll go there later. Uh, so, when we are generous, when we when we are uh, walking in obedience to God, when we are walking in love towards one another, so we are showing hospitality and um, generosity towards one another, then that also attracts a um, favour from God, right? This is what's all we go well with Him. So that attracts favour. But the opposite is true. So when we're stingy, when 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 we, when we um, withhold specifically at the end of the day what it is, is is we're not loving then that also attracts God's disapproval which is what we see with this diatrophies it worked <laughs> look at that I click <laughs> diatrophies there we are so we, we, so he, he <laughs> so he it, it, it's, it's, it's a house joke um, and he, uh, <laughs> uh, so, so when we see um, diatrophies, we see diatrophies in verses seven through to ten. So he is refusing; he's refusing the missionaries that have been sent by John. So essentially, by refusing the missionaries that have been sent by John, he's actually refusing John, which is why it says that he does not acknowledge their authority. So if, if somebody was to send Tony as a missionary that I've never met to me, but that someone is you know, known to me, if I deny now Tony, I'm essentially denying the person that sent Tony, which is what's happening here. So there's Diotrephes, he's done that. So we've got this um, uh, contrast between Gaius and Diotrephes. So Diotrephes, he's not allowing the, the missionaries into his church. But Gaius is, so he brings them into his home, therefore they're also in the church. And of course there's another uh, fellow mentioned here, and it's Demetrius. We see in verse uh, 12, Dem Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add to our testimony and to you know, and, and you know that our testimony is true. So with Demetrius, he's likewise welcoming the brothers. So the testimony, so you've got the missionaries testifying, we see in verse 6, testifying of the love of, of um, Gaius, but there's also the testimony of Demetrius. 
Both of these characters are showing hospitality to the strangers, the missionaries who've been sent by John, as opposed to Diotrephes, who is not. He's refusing them. So he refuses them, and Gaius and Demetrius, they, they accept it. So you've got this contrast all the way through. Uh, these these um, individuals, they'll be in the same area, by the way, not necessarily the same house church, but they are in the same area. And as we said last week, uh, they're all leaders within the church. So remember with um, Diotrephes, he's a leader in the church, but he does not have God. He does not have God, which is why it says in verse 11, Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. So Diotrephes is imitating evil. And we know from 1 John that those who imitate evil... They don't have God. Let's go there. 1 John um, chapter 3. Quick refresher. 1 John chapter 3. So essentially what um, Geotrophes is doing is very similar to what um, John warns about in chapter 3. Uh, specifically we see from verse 10. Uh, remember the classic structure of, of um, 1 John is that... Um, it looks again. It looks at the one who is God's versus the one who is not. So, and you see that in, in all of the books. So we've we've just seen it in, in three John. We've seen that that um, Gaius and Demetrius they have the favour of God, as opposed to um, Diotrephes, he does not. So, what we see the, the very thing that he's doing is what John pick, picks up in uh, chapter three. And here he's narrowing in on the uh, on the Gnostics. So it's the Gnostics who are withholding. And, and John uh, now compares the Gnostics to Cain. We see it in verses 11 to 12. Cain was evil, or he was from the evil one. So don't imitate evil, such as um, uh, Diocrephes is doing. Don't be like Cain, who is of the evil one. Same for same. But we see, it now he's in on verse 17. Who wants to read 17 as a refresher? Um, whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, and how does the love of God abide in him? Yeah, so again, it comes, to, it comes down to material um, goods, so hospitality and, and generosity. Yes. So if you are... Siri, Siri, talk, Siri agrees. She got excited. She did. Siri. <laughs> AI, AI agrees. Yes, that's right. Yes. Amen. That's right. It's already it's li it's listening in, so we, we, we're being watched. Yeah. We're, on, we're on the watch list. Yeah. Hey, Siri. Okay. So we see here that verse 7 is talk, talking about um, hospitality and generosity. And so the one who, who withholds, of course, that one is going to attract two things straight off the bat. So the one who's truly saved is withholding. It's got, you know, it's, it's maybe potentially an area of immaturity that needs to be addressed. Then the, the spirit will con convict, or the heart will condemn. It says in the following verse, the heart will the, the heart will condemn, the spirit will convict, and so essentially the spirit will um, will deal with you with you over that. Uh, the one, the, Tony. Sorry, Mark. Just yeah, did Jeff. We sort of went on this last week, and I got a bit convicted when I went home, and. Um, I don't want to sidetrack, but it just occurred to me, um, we're all living for the coming of Jesus, and I just noticed that the way that we receive the gospel through the churches and that, I can just see how imperfect it's been, and uh, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me was the thing that Paul said in addressing Ephesians, have we all received the Holy Spirit since we believed? It sounds simple, but if we receive a certain gospel presented in the wrong way, many of us may not be oblivious, disoblivious to the fact. Mm. And can, yeah. can I just raise it? Because yeah. we're all running for this race. Yeah. And one of the things about the wise and foolish virgins, the wise vir virgins carried extra oil, oil of the Holy Spirit. And if we haven't been baptised in the Holy Spirit, we may not even be in that position. And it's not a condemnation or anything. It's just an observation from... Yeah, people, you hear yeah. the prayers, you just yep. sense when people who are foundering. And it's good for all the knowledge we're getting. Yeah. But the fundam fundamental knowledge, the knowledge of salvation. And uh, I hope you don't mind just asking the question because 
you may remember pest subjects this is one of mine yeah only because a disciple of many people so yeah. their start governs how they go later on mm. if they haven't received it they're in trouble with a whole lot mm. of thoughts and ideas mm. have we all convincingly received holy spirit yes absolutely yes. Everyone. good question don't feel bad if you haven't that's right I've got all the scriptures and Mark and goes yeah, through it. Yeah. And, uh, I won't be here yeah. that many more weeks because I've got the teaching too. And I want to raise the subject, yeah. Mark. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an important one, and for the ones online too, we also said this um, last week, raise it. If anybody's doubting their salvation, um, you should speak up. Um, come and see one of us afterwards, and we'll walk you through the scriptures. You know, John Wesley was in the same boat and, and uh, thought he was saved until he came up against the, uh, well, until he had an encounter with the Moravians. And uh, then through that encounter, I realised that uh, they've got something that I don't. I've got the knowledge, I've got the theory, I've got the theology, but they've got the spirit, and they've got the experience. And uh, and it was then after that John sought that to also likewise have that experience with the spirit until one day he did. And, he said, and from there on, his ministry um, changed dramatically. So, um, so, so um, in John's journals, there were many references to um, John being very familiar with the Spirit, operating in the power of the Spirit, and uh, and preaching to thousands, exceeding thirty thousand at a time, and, and multitudes, thousands, would come to faith through those meetings because of the um, the power that um, that the Spirit was, you know, that He was operating in through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So again. The scripture says, you know, that, um, that the Bible is, and the, um, this, um, that God's word is, is power. The gospel is power, and, and of course it's the Holy Spirit that empowers us. So uh, the evidence that you have Christ is that you've got the Spirit. And so if you don't know that you've got the Spirit, then that's something you need to follow up. So it's a yeah, good point, um, uh, Tony. And we see it here also in this verse. So uh, with the one that's been holding, the one that's being stingy, it says that the heart condemns them, but also the spirit also convicts them. We see in verse twenty-four, the spirit's active and involved. Uh, the spirit's abiding, and so if you're able to to be stingy, to be loveless, and uh, and not be convicted, not feel condemned, it's just the heart that condemns, the spirit that convicts. If that is, if you're not being condemned, or not going to be being convicted. Well, that's a pretty good sign that you may not be saved, and so that's that's you know that's the starting point. But you'll probably be perceived about him. Yes, and there's the most dangerous thing of all, as we've said many, many times. There are so many in the church that believe are saved and they're not. And, and you could expect that to be the case with any group. And we'll, we'll talk about this in a little, little while. With any mixed group, the Bible says there will be a combination of saved and unsaved. And it will remain that way until the day of judgment. Then Jesus will separate the one from the other, the wheat from the weeds, the goats from the sheep. Uh, so that is a that's just... Um, Common sense, uh, you will have, as Rudy would say, if he was sitting here, well, that's just common sense, uh, to expect that you're going to have the both mingling together, which is what we also see in, in, in uh, 3 John, right? So 3 John, we've got, um, we've got Demetrius and, and Gaius, who are church leaders, but we've also got Diotrephes, who's also a church leader. So we've got there the two and the false mixed together. There's the example. Now, Diotrephes is not outside the church. Yes, he's Gnostic, but he's not outside the church. He's in the church, leading the church, but he's not saved. So we'll talk more about him in, in a moment. But just before we do, uh, so John would likely say, we can see um, from chapter 3 here, if we have time again to read it, we would see that John, so John essentially is questioning anybody, anybody that says, hey, they have love, but they don't, uh, they have God rather, but they don't have love. John would, say, John would question their salvation in some, that's what he's saying. I question your salvation. So what he's actually doing is he's, he's pointing out the... Um, um, the lack of the, the Gnostics. So the Gnostics, they don't have love. They say they have God. They say they have fellowship with God, but they don't have love. Uh, for, so two reasons John says they don't have God, or three. Number one, they don't have fellowship with the apostles. Therefore, they don't have fellowship with God. Number two, they're not walking in love. Therefore, they don't have God. Number three, they go ahead of the written word. So they don't have God. So three reasons why they don't have God. And, and, and we see... In chapter, uh, in, in rather, Third John, two of those are evident. There is a lack of love, and uh, Diotrephes, he is not. He's rejecting John's authority, so he's not in fellowship with John. Therefore, he's not in fellowship with God. Remember from um, one John chapter one, John, you know, to paraphrase, is basically saying that you can either have fellowship with us or you can have fellowship with them, but you can't have it both ways. It's either one or the other. You can't sit in the middle. Is what John's saying. 
And now, we, we, as we go back over to one, uh, three, um, third John, we see something of this um, also. With, um, so, the Office does something, so, something similar. So as John says, hey, see the fellowship with us or fellowship with him, you can't, you can't go, you, them, you can't have it both ways. The Office does the same thing. So the Office, he is uh, rejecting John's authority by rejecting the missionaries that he sent. So not only is he um, rejecting the missionaries, the missionaries, missionaries, they don't have a place to stay. Mm-hmm. So that they may have travelled many miles and, you know, rough terrain, whatever, walking. Uh, now, they don't, at, at the end of their journey, they don't have access to the home, they don't have access to the church, therefore they have food, water, and, um, mm-hmm. and a bed to sleep at. And, and they certainly don't have a gift to allow them to go on to the next place. So they you know, if they're going from place to place to place to place, so essentially, you know, they're living from day to day, which they would be, then this this creates quite the problem. Which again, which is why um, John now really praises Gaius and uh, Demetrius because they've given it. They've they've, they've come to their aid. They they they've looked after they've taken care of their needs where um the office lacked Gaius and Demetrius, they, they picked up the slack. They looked after them. So, so this is why he, uh, he praised them so much. See what uh, um, Geographies does here. In um, we'll, get, we'll jump a couple of verses because we'll come back to it. We see in uh, verse uh, 10b, he refuses to welcome the brothers. He also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. So how's that for a classic cult leader? So what he's essentially saying is, I'm not a, not only am I rejecting John's authority here, so I'm therefore I'm rejecting or denying access to the, the missionaries. But anyone within this church that says, "Hey, let's have let's let's welcome these brothers that have been sent by John the Apostle," he says, "You're out as well." So there, it's communicated. <laughs> but it was a bit both ways, really, at the time, wasn't it? You know, like John's church and. John's people, they were saying don't eat with these people. So there was like a real division. Yeah, well that was a Gnostic, but this guy is, 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 is not calling himself a Gnostic, he's calling himself a church, a church pastor. We see, um, this is interesting, uh, in verse 9, it says that Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first. So the Greek there uh, simply means he wants to be the leader. He desires to yeah. rule over others. He desires to rule over others. Uh, Peter has something to say about that. Let me quickly flick over. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And maybe verses um, 1 to 6. Who wants to read that? 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 to 6. Uh, uh, yeah, chapter 5, verses 1 through to 6. I'll read. Yep. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, sufferings who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them. Not because you must, but because you're willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording over it, or not lording over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to to your elders. All of you. All of you clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. All right, so what do we see there in contrast to what the uh, Diotrephes is doing? Mm-hmm. What's the contrast? Submission versus... Submission, not wanting to lord it over others. So, so those who are appointed to leadership, you shouldn't want to be lording it over others. In fact, you're supposed to be serving. You're the servant leader. Mm-hmm. That's what the uh, that's what the pastor does, the preacher, the Anyone in ministry should be serving others. So it's, you're not, so it's not about the having the you know the you know, the limelight and sitting on the you know in the ivory tower. Yeah. It's about getting down there in in all of the mark and and helping out whoever needs help. Uh, but it's not what 
um, the, the Gnostics wanted. It's not the way they saw it. It's not what um, um, the Optimists wanted. He, so they wanted the best of everything. They put himself first. Uh, remember, likewise, with um, both um, Peter and Jude, who were addressing similar Gnostics, and they say, so Jude says, you know, in, in verse 12, they help themselves. They love to come to the first, the love feast. They love to help themselves. That is, help themselves to the best of everything at the expense of everyone else. And it's Peter that says that their hearts are trained on greed. So this is a, another sign of a false teacher. A, a, a false teacher loves the prosperity, loves the greed, they love the wealth, uh, which again is, you know, the problem with the way some people use verse 2, you know, in relation to John praying this prayer that um, gave his health and his soul would prosper. So again, he's not talking about health, wealth and happiness as Zacharias preached, but rather he's just talking about, you know, that things would go well. So we see that within the context also of, of all of these passages, there's one thing, there's one thing that's common within all the contexts. Well, of, of every passage in relation to when, when, when everything we've talked about, as in going out, uh, so when the missionaries went out, uh, when they were they were sent, uh, likewise with the prayer and the blessing, it was over Gaius. The one thing that, that's common with all of it, suffering. Suffering is the one thing. They all went out under dire circumstances. They all were risking their lives. It's what Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. So it's all suffering. Every time, so the, the Bible talks about going out about some five times, the specific words, talking about the ones who were sent out and on each occasion, specific, so there's four, four occasions in, in the book of Acts, one occasion in the book of Romans, one um, chapter chapter 1, verse 5, the context is called suffering going out and Putting his life on the line, essentially, say so suffering. So you're going to be, you know, you're going to be persecuted. You, you know, you, you may be flogged, you may be stoned, you may be thrown off a cliff, you may be shipwrecked, you may be put in jail, you may be hungry, you may be cold, you may be mocked, you may be, you know, whatever. You're dragged behind balls and stuck on stakes and crucified and, and, and burned alive and all of these things, which is which that was the experience for Paul and for many others, right? So this is the context again. It just absolutely crushes the idea that John is saying or promising that we can have a blessed life. And I was thinking about this this week, um, Mark, that, you know, Paul lasted 40 years and a lot of them had, you know, decent length ministries, except Stephen. Yeah. Probably. So there was a time where they did have God's protection and their hand upon them. Yeah, them sure. They didn't die. No. And they can continue doing what they're meant to be doing. Yeah. Until the point at which... Yeah, that's, and that's exactly right. But Paul wanted to die because Paul was despaired of life itself. In other words, and, and, and similar words came out of Jeremiah, you know, when he cursed the day he was born because it was so tough. Yeah. It was so hard. Paul said it would be better for me to be with God, but better for me, but better for you that I stay here. This is tough. This is a tough gig. You know, he, he, yeah, he lasted 40 years, but I bet he didn't wish he'd, he'd lasted that long. Uh, he would have liked to have gone a lot, a lot earlier. You know, you think, thirdly, so he had God's protection in relation to God sustained his life, but that protection didn't give him a pass from being flogged, from being stoned, from being thrown off a cliff, from being shipwrecked and spending three days <laughs> treading water, uh, from being bitten by a snake, by, by uh, thrown in a jar, and eventually having his head cut off. So God, so up until that point, God sustained him. But God said to Paul, "You will suffer much for my right. name's sake." So yeah, just because so God is sustaining us, but it, you know, God, God is the one who determines when we die. You know, He's the one who gives us it in our, our um, you know, a number of days, and He will sustain us until that day. But it's not to say that it's going to be an easy gig. Remember the Church of Smyrna, one of the churches that were doing well, is you're going to have 10 days of trouble, which means many days of trouble, limitless days of trouble. And uh, they need to endure until the end, until the end, even unto death. So even there was no promise of deliverance even from death. Some of you are going to die for my name's sake. But don't worry, endure to the end and you'll receive the crown. Endure to the end and then you will receive the crown. But if you don't endure to the end, if you flip it, you won't receive the crown. The crown is the crown of life. Uh, pretty important, I would say. Okay, so there's lots of other verses that we can we can um, labour on in relation to the suffering and, uh, and and what it means to be a servant leader. So the, 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 the uh, 
with with Gaius and, and Demetrius. Now they're given, you know, they, what what says now becomes the missionaries, the strangers who've gone out for the name, for the for the to, for the for the sake of, of of the name, Christ's name, to preach and proclaim Christ. So if they're giving, it's they're probably giving sacrificially. So they're not giving out of their abundance. They're, they're, they're stockpiles. You know, if, um, you know, they don't need to. They haven't got a garage full of cars. You know, Rolex, uh, uh, Rolls Royces, and whatever else. It's not that. It's they're probably likewise struggling on Struggle Street, and they're saying, okay, well, you know, this is going to cost me something, which again is lay down your life, right? Lay down your life, and as Jesus said, uh, there is no better thing to lay down your uh, to lay down your life for another. No better thing. So essentially, it's, it's sacred. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to die, but it's, you, you, you're giving. And this is what the love book's all about. This is what Jesus is talking. Uh, John's talking about in chapter three of one John, that for the one who withholds, then well, essentially, that could also um, um, cause God to withhold from you. But the one who gives generously, that attracts a blessing. But we don't give to get. So that's yeah. the difference between us and the, and the Karais, because we give because it's God that commands it. Number one, but it's not it's not about rules and rituals or regulations. It's it's about love. So if you love, you're going to give. In fact, oftentimes when people come over, I look for something to give them. I want to give somebody something of what I have because it's just a natural. You know, I think the closer you get to God, the the more, the more that way you become. You just want to you just naturally want to give people stuff. All right. So big difference. Lots of contrasts. If, if, if you noticed uh, in this chapter. Uh, how many? How many can you can you pick? Many many contrasts. So straight away, we've already we've already named a few. Try and have a uh, uh, work, work through a few. We've got um, the contrast between, of course, you know, the, we've got the good report and the bad report. So we've got the good report from Gaius and Demetrius, a bad report from um, um, regarding the uh, the octopus. We've got uh, uh, the, the ones who are giving as opposed to the one the one who is not. The ones who are going as opposed to the ones who the one who is blocking. The, we say the one who re, who receives a good t- testimony is opposed to the one who refuses. So all of those, you know, sort of go together. What else do you see? There's a few more. You, you're saying the common denominator is between the three letters. Is that what you're no, no, just the, just the contrast between. Um, so you've got. Uh, remember, so the, the coexistent structure, structure here, the critical point is uh, the section, uh, say, 10 into 11, uh, 12 actually. So 11 and 12 I'd go. Uh, so it's a contrast between, um, so specifically verse 11, Beloved, do not imitate evil, imitate good. Whoever does good is from God, but whoever does evil is not, uh, has not seen God. Uh, they go straight into Demetrius. He's he's a good guy, and then we've got um, Diocles. He's a, he's a bad guy. So the, that is the um, the key, the critical point of the classic structure. So then, so there's a contrast right there, but there were many more. Yeah, yeah. You got one? What you, no, well, actually, I was what, what, are, what are the contrasts do you see in the in the letter? Right. Apart from the ones we we already Well no. Example of good and evil. I mean that's mm. what that's yeah, which you know, read. actions. Yep. yep. Lack thereof. What about attitude? What about motive? What about motive? Look at um, again, come back to this uh, say we've got six and seven. So six is that the uh, the missionaries uh, the going out for Christ's name's sake, the going out for Christ's name's sake. The difference between the missionaries and the Gnostics is obviously the missionaries are pro- proclaiming Christ. The Gnostics are denying Christ. Remember that? Mm-hmm. That was a, the critical point of the other um, letters. They're denying Christ. That's what makes them Gnostics. So they are Antichrist. Uh, but with the Gnostics, they go out. They go out for um, um, Christ, for, for, for the namesake, for Christ's name. But they're sent. They're sent by the apostles. The difference between them and the other missionaries, you, you, you might say, uh, they are sent by Satan. How do we know that? How do we know that? 
So God sends the God sends the, 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 the missionaries who are proclaiming his name. Satan Satan sends the missionaries who are going out in their own name. Essentially they're self serving. Mm. So go back to to Second John. So so there's a contrast here also. We've got two types of missionaries, right? So we've got the missionaries sent by God as opposed to the missionaries who are sent by Satan, sown by Satan. And again, remember what we said before, with any, with any congregation, with any meeting, Christian gathering, you would expect to have the true and the false. Satan sends one, Satan sows one, God is the other, and God is, is um, a planting the other. Yeah, it's not like it's every congregation like this. No, no, it's not, we're not saying that. It could, and it, and it could be, it could be, it could be, it, it could be, it could be, <laughs> that would be tragic, wouldn't it? You know, but there's always, but the, the point is, the every leader, every leader should expect that there is, there are those, at least one, under the sound of his voice, who have not yet come to Christ, who have not yet fully experienced Christ's redemptive work. That, that's reality. But it's not to say that it is. There, there, there may be the occasion where there are 100% saved, but the preacher should never assume that. The preacher mm. should always be preaching Christ and Christ, Christ alone. Salvation through Christ, Christ, Christ yeah. alone. Especially when you can walk by grace around. through well, faith. That's that's the problem of uh, churches today. Is described, you know, during end times, it's going to be the lukewarm form church. So. Really, that's that's right. So we should expect it even more so as we as we as we move on. So we're talking about the, to the contrast again. So we've got two, two two missionaries now. If somebody wants to do a um, quick reread or a refresher, so second letter of John, read verse seven through to eleven. Seven to eleven. Oh, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has borne the Father and has been sorry. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet him, for he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Yeah, so these, you can say that these guys are also missionaries who have gone out. They haven't been sent by God, they haven't been, they're not under the, um, they don't have the authority or the endorsement. What's that? Like the yeah, they don't have the authority or endorsement of the, uh, the apostles. They go out in their own name, they go, and, and their hearts are trained on greed, uh, Peter says. And we see likewise in John that they, you know, in June rather they, they, they are, they're full of greed, etc. So here we, we can say with confidence that these guys are sent by Satan. Why can we say that? There's one word that narrows in on it. Why do we? A bit, bit stronger than that. So self. I mean, you can you can be um, selfish, uh, but not necessarily um, um, sent by Satan. But there is a word here. There is one word that gives us absolute. Confidence that we can say that these guys are sent by Satan. The deny the Christ has come in the flesh. That's one part of it. And does that? And what make, what does that make them? Anti Christ. So if they're any Christ, they're Satan. They belong to Satan, right? And remember, we so uh, one John chapter three. One John chapter three narrows in on the ones who belong to God, the ones who are the children of God, and who are the children of the devil. So these guys are the children of the devil. So you know, the, the trouble with this, though, too, is that a lot of the people who are following be it the, the Jehovah's Witness, the Mormons, or whatever cultish, non-biblical teaching or whatever, you know, a lot of these people they they believe it with such conviction, though, too, which is kind of the hard uh, challenge or hurdle to kind of overcome, because you're essentially, you know, imagine if somebody came to you. And speaking, well, you're you're of the devil, and yeah, I mean that's yeah, you know. I guess the question that I would form from that would be, well, is there a a, a good way to approach them, or yeah. you know, essentially yeah. the Bible saying reject them? Yeah, uh, and we, you know, yeah. we talked about this two weeks ago when I had them come yeah. to my house, and yeah. I was pretty much, you know, I thought yeah, it was sure. pretty on. 
aside from going, yeah. if I go to your site, yeah. <laughs> I'm dealing with the devil. I wasn't yeah. going to yeah. come out and say that. But yeah. I mean, you know, when you come across to someone like that, um, the typical knee-jerk reaction is to reject it. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. So, what, what about the testimony? Um, what's that? I've, I've had them come in. I've had a mother and daughter, and I sitting there, I mean not sitting there, they're standing outside the gate. Yes. But they stayed there for about good 20 minutes to half an hour well. because they haven't got the word of testimony within them. And when yeah. they meet somebody who has got that word of testimony mm. and has received the miracle of Christ within mm. and had healings where they can um, tell them yeah. The power of the Lord only did that because there's only no That's way, right. yeah. no other way except yeah. because the doctors themselves yeah. couldn't. Mm. Yeah. You know. So to answer the question, I, I always, when I come into contact with them, I share the gospel with them. Absolutely. So I share, I share the gospel with them. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you just drank holy water. Do you realise that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you drink? <laughs> it's holy since I've started drinking it. Oh, no. <laughs> hold on, hold on. She just crossed the line there. <laughs> My yeah, gosh, no wonder he's going to click. <laughs> Why'd you click for him too? Uh, I'm, feel, I'm feeling light. Oh, my God. <laughs> there you go. Well, as I said before, pride comes before the fall. It's like the <laughs> That's a little bit like an internal baptism. Yeah. All right, oh, so, so again, <laughs> uh, you, you want to, definitely you want to share the gospel with them, but there is a point where, you know, you, if they continue to deny, to reject the truth, and if they want to continue to uh, promote their false mm. uh, gospel, then you need to be able to say enough's enough, and, right. we, and you part ways, which is, you know, we see many, many examples of that in the scripture. You know, Paul talks about, uh, you know, those who are, Preaching different gospels, avoid them, avoid them. Yeah. But you want them to have the opportunity to at least hear the gospel. Yeah. Yes, because if they are willing to hear. Yeah, and who knows what God will do with that? I mean, it's Absolutely. not us that saves. It's not us. You know, right. one, right. one, one, we plant the seed. Put God another God water, and God brings the harvest. So mm. it could be that, hey, you know, a seed's been planted here, and another one has been planted there, and da 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 da. da somebody's watering. Who knows? You're just a part of the process, right? Absolutely. Part of the process of um, them coming to Christ. Some, so some, some Jehovah's Witnesses have come to Christ by having an interaction, in, by having an interaction with a believer. So you you want that? In fact, just the other day, I saw about five of them gathering at the front of the house and this like, house. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was on my way to work, so I, <laughs> I couldn't stop. But I was just heading off and I saw them, and I mean, you can spot them a mile away. <laughs> and uh, and they were all cuddled around, you know. I think they were having a you know a prayer circle or whatever before they went out. You know, they, and I just felt sorry for them. I did. I started praying for them, and I just and I just thought, Lord, you know, you know, I've said before, if if you could ever make an exception for anyone, you know, these guys, you yeah. know, they truly, truly, truly believe that they're doing a good a good thing, a good work. They truly believe they're working towards their salvation, and it's just you know they they miss a critical thing, which was the same for John Wesley. Faith, it's faith in Christ. It's by grace through faith that we are saved, not by works. Because we are saved, we do good works, but we don't get we don't get saved by doing good works. And so you had it the wrong way around. And many, many do. Many within many churches, many denominations, particularly traditional denominations, are, are in the same city. Go, John. I wanna, I wanna though, because I'm sure people who are watching this right now, and you know, they, they've had these. The, and it, whether it be an encounter or had even thoughts themselves saying, uh, and I've, I've had this argument thrown at me before, which is to say, but they really believe it, and won't God honor that? Mm. I mean, that's kind of, it's just like yeah. the prayer that you kind of threw yeah. out there. Yeah. So it's like, I have to, uh, you know, I don't necessarily, yeah. my answer would be, well, I know my Bible says clearly Jesus said you must be born again. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. So therefore, I have to wonder them what would God be saying to them mm -hmm. on that day. Well, God will honor his word. He won't honor what we believe outside right. of his word. That's right. that's the end of the story. So it's you know that 
And the problem is they don't believe that Jesus Christ was more than the Son of God. Well, right, he was Satan's brother in the <laughs> Mormon's case, and yeah. uh, I don't know what the J. W. So that's right? that's they, a they distinguishing just point. He was the Son of God, but they don't believe he was God in yeah. 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 Now, so so back to so ah, so we right. clearly see here that these um. Now, these Gnostics in this case are deceivers, they are Antichrist. So they are Satan. See, now, um, we shouldn't be surprised that this kind of activity is, is, is current in today's churches as well. We see something about in uh, Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians, have a look at what um, Paul says about the same type. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, Gary's on speed dial with his shiny new tabs. There you go. <laughs> So if one wants to read, uh, maybe verse 12 through to 15. So we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 12 to 15. As a woman was made from man, is that what it is? Mm. No. Yeah. And I will keep on second, doing Second Corinthians chapter 11. Yeah, okay. Continue. Chapter two. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So that's what Paul says about the, uh, the same type. You know, so, so these, these are those who want to put themselves first, right? They, want to, mm-hmm. they, they desire to be leaders and they desire to live over others. They desire to be rich, they desire to be... To have the limelight, the desire to have the, the microphone and the pulpit and whatever else. This is what Paul says about them: that they are Satan's, they are Satan's agents. Satan has sent them. In the same way that there's devils masquerade as angels of light, these ones do too. So this is it's a pretty damning mm-hmm. description of them, isn't it? Now look over. So go back over to um, three John. So again, we see, as we've already said, uh, Diotrephus, he likes to put himself first. The same, the same as what Paul just said of his other uh, super apostles, um, Paul called them. Uh, some three, four times he calls them super apostles. Now, he's being sarcastic. There's nothing super about them. Uh, they're super idiots. Uh, perhaps that would be more fitting. You know, they think, they also think that they are saved. These are the Gnostics. They think they saved. They think they have fellowship with God. They're rejecting Paul's authority here. They're rejecting John's authority. Same for same. Uh, the difference between perhaps the Gnostics and and um, this this uh, individual here, um, Diotrephus, is Diotrephus is in the church. So the Gnostics have got their cults, but the the apostles aren't um, wouldn't wouldn't regard that as a church. But here the apostle does. So the apostle actually regards it as a church. In fact, the word "their church" is written three times in this um, section. Now John only writes the word church in 3 John, the third letter of John. That's it. He doesn't write it in the Gospel. He doesn't write it in First and Second John, only in 3 John, and then again 19 more times. Guess where? Revelation. Revelation, of course. So John writes the book of Revelation. 19 times he writes the word church. Now, in the book of Revelation, you see the, the church mentioned, mentioned many times in um, the, the, the first few chapters. Up until chapter uh, five, four, three. Well, last one. Four, quite right. Four, four, four. Four, and, and you don't see it again until when? Nineteen. 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 Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. All of those, all of those chapters in between, there's no church. Guess who's there? Yeah. Israel. Yeah, Israel. Israel. Oh yeah. Not yeah. the church. Yeah, the yeah. church is gone. If the church was still on the earth. You would see 19 times he says church in the book of Revelation. Mm. Not in the tribulation. Nowhere to be seen in the tribulation as yeah. a church. Yeah. Do, do we say it was five? Hey? Five. Five what? Chapter five? No, four. Four. Oh, it's four. four. Okay. 
You do not see the church in the tribulation. Zip, zero. You see saints, but the saints is not the church. Yeah. Why? Did, there's a distinction there. Tribulation. The saints are the ones coming to faith in the tribulation. They're the Jews and the ones who come to faith through the Jews. Yeah. They're the saints. All right, so that should knock the business on the head with regards to the church going through tribulation. It's white. All right, so uh, three times, so three times John mentions the church here. So we see it in verse um, 6, 9, and 10. 6, 9, and 10. And the interesting, so there's another contrast here. So in 6, we see, um, so 6, who testify of your love before the church. So this is the, the missionaries testifying of the love of Gaius before the church. That's who, which church do you think that, that might be? John's church, right? Specifically, but churches in general. And we see it further on. Uh, so the, where I say um, in general, verse 15, peace, uh, peace be with you, the friends greet you, greet the friends, every one of them. The friends are who? The believers in Christ, right? And so we see a very similar ending to uh, the second letter of um, John. Now, so the next reference we see to church, verse no, uh, 6 was the first, verse 9, I've written something, I've written something to the church about the offer, the offices, who likes to put himself first? So this character is in the church. So he's not. He's written to the church that um, Dr. Feast is um, uh, leading, or he's at least got himself into a position of authority because he likes to put himself first. He likes to lead. He likes to rule over others. That's what it means. So he's at least in some position of authority. So he's so he's essentially here. John has written to him himself. So John's writing to him, and now he says also that he wants to take it up in, in person. So when I come, I'm going to bring up what he is doing, talking with nonsense against us. So he's written to him, he's telling guys, I've already told him, and when I get there, I'm going to tell him again. And not just him, I'm going to, because he is sinning publicly, I'm going to expose him publicly. And so then the third time we see it is verse 10. Verse 10, uh, the word church. Yeah, this is when he says he's going. When he when, so when he comes to the church, and he says, um, uh, so he's talking wicked with, with nonsense against them, and uh, and not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers. Um, so that's into the church. He also stops those who 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 want. He also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. So he's in the church. Uh, so interestingly here, interestingly see, so you've got um, essentially. He's speaking about the um, the ones who have favour. So um, essentially, you've got uh, so it's a Gaius, Gaius um, getting a report back with the force. Uh, Demetrius could also be included into that, and against and, and the one who does not. So you've got the ones in the church who are going out from the church. The ones we see again in verses um, six, uh, no seven, uh, for they have gone out for the name's sake. They've gone out. So they're in the church, going out from church to church, proclaiming the gospel, spreading the word. But you've got all this other one who's in the church, who's he's he's in the church, but he's not of the church. Remember, we've seen, seen um, elsewhere they you know they, they they've gone out from us, so they're no longer a part of us. They're in the church, they're there, the enemy within. They're there, they're, 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 but they but they but they're not of God. Is is what it's saying. And were they ever of God? That's the question. Well, that's a quick. Well, the Gnostics, it, it would be case by case. So, say so some, some potentially never, but others, yes. And it's um, Demas again. We come back to him. So Demas was um, Paul's, like a right hand man. He was a fellow worker of the gospel, and he was doing, you know, great works uh, on behalf of Paul. So he would have been very similar to these missionaries. They're going out, he's proclaiming the gospel in church to church. Uh, Paul's sending him. Paul's endorsing him. So if Demas knocks on your door, right? Uh, I've never met Demas, but I know Paul. Paul, so Demas has got a letter in his hand. He's saying, "Oh, Paul has sent me. Paul the apostle has sent me." Straight away, I read the letter. I can see it's Paul's hand because I know Paul. I recognise Paul's writing, and I say, "You're welcome. You're a brother. And mm -hmm. Even though I know nothing about you, you're welcome." But Demas, so he, that 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 was Demas was doing that, and so mm -hmm. people were receiving. So he, because he's endorsed by Paul, then uh, he was received as receiving Paul. I, I just want to add to you know what it makes me think of is is, is um, maybe I'm, you help me out here. I think it's Ephesians that talks about um, looking for the fruits of the spirit, and I think it's Galatians. Okay, I think it's so critical, especially nowadays, that that we're doing this just because I you know 
I see, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, and it's like everybody's got this Christian speakies of... Um, Christianese. Yeah, Christianese, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yet, how many churches or other Christians are actually calling them up by what they're, what they're yeah. actually doing? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's right. It's, but but he, here's a critical thing. So if you're endorsed by another, particularly in those days, but even now, if you're endorsed by another, it's mm. like, as I said before, if, I, I, if I'm receiving the one who's, who's been endorsed by Paul, I'm receiving Paul. If I'm refusing the one who's been endorsed by Paul, or in this case, mm. John, I'm refusing John. Right. So this is the key. Now, this is why, now this should really, uh, this is where Robbie gets the right for you. This is why John is saying in his second letter, don't greet the false teachers in the street and don't give them access to your house. Why? Because you are endorsing them. You're right. approving them. So if you're approving them, then others will receive them as if you sent them with your stamp of approval on them. So these guys have got the stamp of approval. So these guys are from the church, going out from church to church, and then you've got this other character. So three times he mentions church. Uh, so I, that, that's, that's interesting in itself. So he's in the church, but not of the church. Again. How did they let him in? Well, perhaps at one point he was okay. So again, we come back to Demas. So Demas was... You know, somebody who's endorsed by Paul, mm. who went away from the gospel, reject, well, he, he um, um, walked away from salvation, is the best way to put it. Paul, he walked away from salvation, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter uh, 4, verse 10, walked away from salvation, fell in love with the world. Mm. And later we, we read through the early church writings and he became a, um, a priest of idols. So full, full blown Gnostic, full blown Gnostic. So yes, once we're saved, according to Paul, Paul, I mean, Paul would have, you would have thought that Paul would have been able to distinguish who was saved and who wasn't. You know, he certainly would have had all of the, you know, he ticked all of the boxes, he would have been talking the right, you know, talking the talk and walking the walk, wouldn't he? But still, even if he was never saved, well, you know, he pulled the wool over, over Paul's eyes, and here's Paul that was pretty intimate with the Spirit, you know, you would think that the Spirit would be going, yeah, not this one. This one's not so good. Remember, even Jesus knew that Jesus was not good. Mm. You know, mm. Jesus was here, but Jesus knew, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a problem. You know, but he allowed it because obviously it was fulfilling scripture, it's fulfilling mm. prophecy. Yeah, so it's an interesting point there. Now, uh, another as a distinguishing point. Remember, we, we said there there are many, as we've said already. Uh, the, we see in um, the. Uh, so again, verse, verses six and verses seven, they're going out for the for the um, for the sake of the name, so for the sake of Christ. We've seen with the other ones already that they're going; they're essentially in it for themselves. You know, they're, they're promoting themselves; they're not so much promoting Christ. So, for the ones who are promoting Christ, what specifically do you think that they're promoting? Think back to John's letters. Why are they number one? Why are they promoting? Well, number one. Number one. What did John say in his opening passage, chapter 1, first, uh, first three verses, specifically? Chapter 1, 1 John, chapter 1, first three verses. Is that Eugenia? That is God. That is God. What were, you, what were they saying? What were they saying? Which we have touched. Yes. So, yeah, we, we, we saw him, we heard him, we touched him, he proclaimed to us and we proclaimed to you. That's what they were saying. That's what they were saying. So that's the number one, right? So the number one is, hey, he came. He came, so they're, they're talking about the redemptive work, right? He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead, the redemptive work. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. If anybody ever asked you, if anybody ever asked you in a paragraph to give me the gospel, where would you go? Rise Oh, you mean where to find this? Yeah, yeah. 1 John 1. <laughs> oh, um, Romans. John 3 16. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, they're all right. There's no wrong answer there. But what about um, what about one Corinthians chapter fifteen? Oh, yeah. Which one? Well, I want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> we just need the, the words, not the text. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, if you if you see the text, you see the words. You'll have the words. All right. So let's let's see it. Um, yeah. So chapter one, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. So we can look at, um, where do you stop? I mean, it's all good here. 
Uh, why don't we go through to... Yeah, we could. Well, one, we we could do through to uh, eleven. Why don't we just do eleven? So one to eleven. Who wants to read that? Okay. One. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance that I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the, the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. Again, so the gospel here is, is um, easily, you know, it's, it's, it's made very plain. It's, it's about Christ, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. Uh, the, it's, Paul here says, uh, verse 2, and by which you are being saved. This gospel, if you've, you've heard this gospel and you're holding on to this gospel, you're being saved if you hold fast to the words I preach unless you believe in vain, which is essentially what happens to the, um, to, to the Gnostics. Now, chapter 15 is what? What it, it is known for one particular reason. It's a resurrection chapter. Resurrect, resurrection chapter. So it's talking about Christ's resurrection, but it's also talking about our resurrection. So we see further on down, uh, so maybe 20 through to um, uh, 28. You know, we get, so Christ is going to come back. We're going to be resurrected. He was resurrected. We're going to be resurrected. He was the first. We're going to be resurrected likewise. This, this chapter is also very well known for something else. What is it? It's still about resurrection, but what else do we often... Resurrected body. Resurrected body, but when does that happen? Uh, the rapture. The rapture. So this, this is this got two famous verses in here for the rapture. Where are they? Who remembers? The trumpet, so 52. 50. Yeah, so we go down to uh, uh, 51, starting at 51. 51. And... Um, why don't, we, why, don't we, why don't we read 51 through to uh, 50, uh, 55, 51 and 55. Okay. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We, should not all, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable, perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable, perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then there shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your mm. sting? Can I ask you something though too? In yeah. regards to this with Paul speaking, mm. where do you feel that Paul gained this knowledge from? Was it from just this direct encounter with Jesus and then had an understanding to be yeah. able to speak from it? Or was yeah. it in that those years that it was that he was building his ministry before he finally came yeah. came out? Yeah. You can you, you look like you... I think when, when God threw him off his horse and blinded him, mm. he downloaded a lot of stuff. Right. He showed him what mm. he was going to suffer. He showed him why he was going to suffer. Mm. He showed him who he was. Yeah. So I think a lot yeah. of it came then. He spent many years in the wilderness, didn't he? Relearning, yes. right. relearning. So he was right. being ministered to by the Spirit. So you, you, you can you can also draw some of this from the Old Testament as well. So he had very good knowledge of that. Mm. But when he was in the wilderness, I think it was at Damascus, at somewhere or Arabia, wasn't he? And um, there, was, there was two parts. So he's, he had two spells in the wilderness. So 
And in that time, the spirit was teaching mm. him. So he was essentially, all, everything he'd learned, so he had great head knowledge, but now he had to have revelation knowledge. Yeah. yeah. So he had to have that, you know, it's a it's a different kind of knowledge. Yes. Uh, so the, in the Greek word, there are two words for, two Greek words for knowledge. One is knowledge as in, you know, just general knowledge, and mm. one is knowledge as in experience. It's just going to say an experiential type so, of So he had the head knowledge, but then, got, then then he gained the spirit, and then the spirit taught him so much more. So the spirit obviously taught him, you know, showed him mm. a lot of this. And likewise for any of the apostles. Remember the apostles, they were writing scripture under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. So a lot of what they were writing wouldn't have been otherwise known to them outside of God revealing it to them. Yeah. So you've got that. So, so the, the, this is a great rapture verse. So, so, so what we, we see here, what, the, the question was, what, are, what were the missionaries, the sent missionaries preaching? Christ. So they're preaching Christ. So Christ as in the, um, the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. And likewise, Christ's return, which is what the Gnostics were um, rejecting in, in Second John, the second letter of John. So these are two things. And as I said before, within the mix, within the mix, you've got, say, the church, the gatherings, and you know, the the the, um, the fellowships. You've got the mix of the one and the other. So when Christ returns, that's when He separates. That's when He separates. So the goats, um, the goats from the sheep, and the wheat and the weeds. Until then, they're mixed together. But the responsibility of every preacher and the responsibility of every member in Christ is to continually proclaim Christ. And that is that even those who are within, among, they're hearing. They have an That's opportunity right. to respond. Remember with um, di- treaties, not treaties, am I saying it right? Diotrophies. It's always good to have a little brief, I always say that. <laughs> it's um, di- diotrophies. Diotrophies. I should just click. Diotrophies. Uh, remember, he's in sin and he's in, he's in great danger. Like um, John is saying, don't imitate evil. He's imitating evil. He's in great danger. But John's writing to him. Mm. And John's going to go and see him. He has the, the grace of God is still afforded even to him, who is blocking John, to hear the gospel. Now, the evidence is from the letter that he didn't. But the opportunity is, not, is still there. So when someone's been corrected, so within, within any fellowship, when somebody's been conf- corrected, confronted, challenged, there lies an opportunity to repent. So that's the grace of God in itself. It's still even extended to him. So he's not outside of that. Otherwise, John wouldn't be writing to him. John would have just moved him on. Don't you can't have fellowship with him. If you do, you haven't got fellowship with us, going back to the first chapter. So one thing we know, so the difference between um, Diophanes and the others, is the others are preaching Christ. They're going out for his name's sake. This, this, this individual wouldn't have been doing that. He's in it for himself. So there's one distinction. There are five more we see that um, John lists. So nine to ten. We see so, five more distinctions. Who can pick them up? We've said one of them numerous times. We've said a few of them actually. What's the first one we see in verse nine? He puts himself first. He puts himself first. Well, and then following that, what else does he do? He speaks with nonsense. He rejects. He rejects John's authority. That's number two. Following, following that, he's, he's, um, he's talking nonsense. Now, the word there, um, so in, in some versions, it's malice. So what, he, what he's saying, and, and also talking is also, um, in the Greek camp, can also be babbling. So idle talk, babbling, which is Paul says not to do. Uh, and, and avoid, in fact, those ones who do do it. But so what he's doing here, so malice is actually carried, it's, it's a bit stronger than just talking nonsense. He, he's intending harm. That's, so he actually intends John harm. Okay. So when the missionaries turn up at his door, they're likewise potentially in danger. Because he, he, if he intends John harm, then they are also in harm's way. So that's the next one. Following that, so he's refusing the, he's uh, talking nonsense. What else is he doing? To the brothers. He refuses to welcome the brothers, and the fifth he allegation, the he, he excommunicates the ones who do want to welcome the brothers. So he's got there's quite a uh, quite an accusation there. So for all of these things, John is saying, "Hey, you're in the church, but you're not of it because you because you're not in fellowship with us. Therefore, you're not in fellowship with God. You're not um, you're not loving the brothers. Therefore, you say you've seen God, 
you say you love God in whom you haven't seen, but you but you don't love the, the brothers in whom you have seen. Therefore, you don't have God. So for these reasons, he says, you don't have God, you don't have God. And then, of course, uh, he's, re he's rejecting John's authority, which also me means that he's rejecting the written word. So mm -hmm. he falls into the same category as second letter of John, whereas they've gone ahead of the teachings of Christ. So now he's, because he's leading and lording, he takes it upon himself. He's rejecting that authority, therefore he's, you know, as the Gnostics did, they had uh, extra biblical revelation, extra biblical knowledge. So they go ahead of. So for all these things, for all these reasons, we see verse 11 that he's imitating, imitating evil. Now we've got um, um, here is another warning. So verse 11 is a warning. Why is it a warning? Why is it a warning? Because if you do evil, you're not from God. Who's it a warning to? The church. The church. Beloved, who's the beloved? The church. The believers. Verse one. Who's the beloved? Gaius. Gaius. Gaius is the beloved. So he so he starts off addressing um, Gaius the beloved. Then he then he comes back to him. Now here it is. Think about this for a second. Gaius is doing really well. He's got a great testimony. A great testimony from um, the the, uh, the missionaries. And, and likewise, the church, I've heard it, and they're, you know, they're praising. They, we see it in verses 3, um, um, three and 4. Uh, John says there's no greater joy. There's no greater joy to hear that some are still walking in truth and love. No greater joy. So they're, they're really celebrating this, particularly under the circumstances. So he's doing really, really well. But now we see in verse um, um, 11, Beloved, do not imitate evil. In other words, so far, so good. So far, so good. Don't stuff it up. Remember, we've, we've said this before, go back to 1 John. Mm. 1 John. And so we see in chapter 2, we see these, um, uh, you know, great praise report, verses 12 to 14. Yes. I'm writing to you, little children, uh, because your sins are forgiven. I'm writing to your fathers, because you know him from who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have come, you've overcome the evil one. And he repeats the same again. Right, so far, so good. You've done, you're doing really, really well. Then, guys, guess what? Don't love the world and the things of the world. And then and then again over in verse 26, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. In other words, you can still get brought undone. Now if we go over the second letter of John, we see something similar. So verse 4, I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth. Just as they were commanded, so some are, potentially some aren't. So so far so good, I'm commending you guys, you know, well done. I love this, you know, I love to hear about this. Then verse 8, watch yourselves, watch yourselves. In other words, you can still get brought undone. It's not over mm -hmm. yet. And so then we see the same thing here in 3 John, where it's, again, great report, verse 11, Beloved, do not imitate evil, imitate good. So continue, continue. So there's a challenge. There's a challenge. We see it consistently through Scripture. This is very interesting also where it says imitate good, so obviously here he's referring to um, hospitality, so the context hospitality and generosity. So there's a very similar verse to this in um, 1 John 3, 7 and 8. Let me just quickly go back there. 1 John 3, 7 and 8. How are your tabs holding up, John? I'm going, you yeah. surviving? <laughs> All right. Oh, big goal here. All right, John, um, 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. Who wants to read it? Think. Now, when you read it, I want you to think. John's just commanded Gaius, and then says, uh, "Continue, continue to do good. Continue to do good." Now, now think good. Look for the like word here. Do you want to read it? Seven and eight. John three seven. Eight. Yep, it's basically repeating the same. He's doing the same thing. Yeah. Little children, if I can. Yeah. But oh, sorry. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. All right. So, the, the, the word here, the, the it's it's the same. He's saying the same thing. He's making this contrast, right? Uh, so, so you've got those who imitate evil, those who imitate good, those who are following. Um, righteousness or practicing righteousness and those who are not the one practicing righteousness that one's of God the one who isn't that one's of the devil 
So the, the, the word, the only d difference here is the word righteousness and good. So good is, as we've already said, refers to hospitality and generosity. Righteousness in context here refers to what? Sin. 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 So don't practice sin. Don't practice sin. I love what John Wesley uh, talks about the uh, process of sanctification. Uh, so you've got positional sanctification, you've got a process of sanctification. So the positional sanctification is justification. Process of sanctification is license. So he believed that this side, this side of Christ's return, you can have perfect sanctification. What he means by that is where some people get caught up. They think, oh, we, we can get to the point where we never sin. It's not, it's not what he, he believed. What he believed is you can get to a point where you no know longer deliberately sin. He said, you, so, so by practicing righteousness, by, by pursuing holiness, you can get to the point where you no longer deliberately sin. And that was his aim. That was his aim. Now, he, 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 he understood that we will all sin unintentionally because we have that endemic nature. But we can get to the point, and we should all strive for this, we should all strive for this, where we, get, where we don't deliberately sin. And it's really, don't you think it's more like about walking in the spirit versus walking in the flesh? Yeah. So when you're yeah. in the spirit, you're not going to sin. Yeah, that's right. If you're walking in the spirit 100% of the time, yeah. bang on. That's right. That's what the scripture says, be filled with the spirit, not with wine. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so if, you, you're being, you're being, um, you're not deliberately sinning and walking in the spirit. It's not of you because you're walking in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So this, this is where Paul says, you know, um, um, there's no longer him that sins. Yeah, but when you're in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. But the sin is, rather, the sin is within him. Uh, it's not him doing it because he doesn't want to do it. Mm. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, then Romans 7 goes into that. So, uh, that's, I mean, that, that, that's what um, um, the Wesleyans believe, that uh, you can get to the point of, um, we, of, of sinless perfection. It's not to say that you, you won't sin. It's, a, to say, it's saying that you won't deliberately sin. Uh, that's something we should all strive for. So again, the, um, uh, you've got this contrast between the two passages. You're saying the same thing, essentially. You've got the, 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 the um, ones who belong to God and, as opposed to the ones that don't because of the way that they behave. So it's all, all comes down to their action. Mm -hmm. So with the, um, as we said, with the uh, verse 11, verse 11, uh, every, every, every um, letter of John, remember we've said, is, is um, um, eschatological. It's eschatological. The third letter of John is, is the exception. Of course, the book of Revelation is all about eschatology. Uh, however, there is one verse, uh, and you, you knew that I'd find one, that would, you know, there is one eschatological verse here, and it's verse 11. It is verse 11, because it's talking about the judgment, right? So, behold, uh, beloved, do not even take evil, but even take good. Whoever does good is from God, but whoever does evil has not seen God. Now, the one that hasn't seen God, well, they're going to see him on that day. So they haven't seen him this side, but Jesus will come back and they will be judged. So, essentially, he's, he's saying to, saying off this, um, the this guy, It's such a tongue. It's, it's not if you're a Greek. There you go. You had trouble before. But I'm doing, I'm going quickly. I'm going quickly. You know, it, 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 I can do it when I'm not, when I don't need to do it. When I don't need to do it, I can do it. But anyway, I, I'm going to call him diarrhea to make it easier. <laughs> but he, because he's like the diarrhea, really. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, so. So this guy, this guy's facing judgment. This is what John's saying. This guy's facing judgment, right? So it is eschatological on that point when Jesus. So the, the other thing that the, all preachers sent by God would be saying, outside of you know Christ, um, um, Christ, um, crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, is his return. Is what we were saying before. So it's you know it's all jammed in. So the, it, it still is. It is there. You disagree? No, no, no. no I was thinking about something. Yeah, all right. I'm with you. Okay. All right, so um, we we would have we don't have time um, to talk about um, the passage in relation to the gifts. So we, we but if you, if you want to look, um, go there later on uh, Romans twelve verses four to eight and Corinthians one Corinthians twelve verses four to eleven and uh, and twenty eight. Now um, 
1 Corinthians, so 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13 talks about a gift that supersedes any other. What is it? Love. Love. So, so there are numerous gifts. So there is gifts of, um, of serving, gifts of giving, gifts of um, hospitality, etc. All of those things, which is you know, evident in these two. But the, the, one, the one that is, um, is required to be evident over above every other gift is the gift of love. And it's the very gift that this other individual doesn't have. Which again puts him in awe with God because John says on a couple of occasions in his first letter, so for instance, um, 1, 1 John chapter 3, verse 10 and 4, verse 20, that if you don't have love, you don't have God. You know how God gives each a measure of faith? Yeah. Does he also give a measure of love? Is that anyway? No, so. No, so, I've never seen no. so who, who wants to join in the first? Tony, Tony you'll, you, you'll have a. <laughs> I mean, it's you'll, a have a good, you'll have a good answer on this. I'm, 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 I'm believing it. Well, well I believe because it, it's one of the fruit, it's something that's going to be cultivated out of you, really, as opposed to the gifts, which is, uh, you know, which is just gifts so you minister. But uh, as you die in the flesh, I believe the spirit then can actually cultivate better fruit. That's how I see it. You grow the spirit. Ephesians 3, 16, love 20 it talks about being rooted no, and established in love, yeah. knowing the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of that yeah. love. And then well, it I says at the end, so that you may be filled with all the fullness the of God. The church. Yeah. So it is yeah. something yeah. that is cultivated, yeah. something yeah. that you but seek like after, like after the fruit yeah. to understand, the you know, to understand the, the, the love yeah. that is beyond understanding the human So it develops, doesn't it? That's right. So there's the answer. Great, um, Virginia nailed it with some verses. I love that. Yeah, the verses yes. they give us as well. So Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 16 to 20. Did you want to give about a being rooted and established in love to understand, to know the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of, of God. love that is beyond our understanding? And it, then it says to know, to be filled with all the fullness of God. So it's something that is cultivated, something that you seek after, something that um, grows in you as you pursue God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, it's not so, a gift given, unlike faith. No, it's not a gift. It's no. a fruit. Of yeah. The spirit. Yeah, but but if, as Paul says, if, if you can have all of your other gifts, but if you don't have love, you're just a noisy, noisy gong. Yeah. So, yes. which which which, and he was confronting the Corinthian church who were. Flowing in the years, but, he's not saying but they weren't necessarily. Saying, he's just saying love is more important. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the fruit of love. Yeah. Is more important. So it's, well, well, love is the evidence. Essentially, it's the outworking evidence that you have the spirit. If God is love, then if we are filled with God and we're yeah. abiding with Him, yeah. then we we can't right. help. That's right. The outworking of that is love. It love it pours out of you. You, you can say, you can say the, um, oh, the the gift of love. If you wanted to say the gift of love. You can, for this reason, that um, God's gift to us was His Son, and God is love. So we received His Son; that's His gift to us. There's another very important scripture. So, your measure of love, He first loved us. Yeah. The ones who've been forgiven, who recognise it, yeah. much, they love much. That's yeah. Right. That's right. It's a revelation yeah. of how much you are forgiven. So, so this is what this really comes down to. So you can see the great love for um, of Gaius and also Demetrius. The great love of John and the great love for the missionaries who go out with nothing, putting their lives on the line, going from place to place to proclaim the name. So there's love, 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 love all the way through there. But this other character, he doesn't love, I'm sick of saying his name now. <laughs> uh, he, he doesn't have any love. Well, he, he, well but, I can, but I can stand corrected. He has plenty of love for himself. Now, right. let's let's have a look at on this our last verse, Second Timothy. Well, let's see what Paul has to say about that. And particularly, uh, it's of particular interest. It also talks about our day. So, Second Timothy chapter three, verse one to six. Who wants to read that? But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, 
ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins, and led astray by various passions. Yeah, go on, maybe seven as well. Always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. So this is this is a, um, you know, really very well sums up this other individual that we're dealing with. It's, um, I'm sick of saying his name, but... Um, or butchering his name, I should say. But uh, uh, but look, notice notice here it says in the last days, this this is people are going to be lovers of themselves. So he's not talking to the world here. He's talking to the church. He's talking to the church, and he's talking about those in the church who are behaving in this way, and they're specifically targeting weak people. So they're going to women's houses. To, because the last days is since Christ, so the last yeah. two thousand years. Yeah. I, I don't see why that would be church people versus the world. Well, he's not talking to the world, and we can see here again. So it's the ones who are. Um, so, verse six: For among them are these who creep into the households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led uh, led astray by by various passions, always learning. And they're never able to arrive at the knowledge of the truth. We also see verse five, having an appearance of godliness but denying the power. Avoid such people. So these ones are Gnostics. These ones that are, they call themselves Christian. They believe they're Christian. They believe they're saved. They believe they're in fellowship with God. These are the ones that Paul is addressing here. These ones who parade around as if you know they they, they have God. They they they're all about themselves. They're lovers of self. So as opposed to. Um, Demetri- uh, Demetrius and Gaius, and of course John and the missionary, who love God. So they li- they're living um, sacrificially. They're living sacrificially. These guys here, they're only living for themselves. They're in it for what they can get out of it. Which is why John says of this other character, he likes to put himself first. He wants to lead. He wants to lord it over others. One other verse, which is of interest, I, and, and I'll, I said I'll stop, but there's one, one other verse I just... Um, we've got the screening at the, at the back, and I'm going to go quite fast. Uh, 13 to uh, 15. 13 to 15. Uh, very similar to the greeting in, in uh, the uh, John's second letter. Very, very similar. There, there is a, a distinction, though, here uh, with the, uh, the letter part 15. Uh, peace be with you. The friends greet you, greet the friends, everyone greet them. So remember, this is John writing. This is John writing. So an interesting word here he uses, quite unique to his letters, friend, in this sense. So he's, much of what he, he, he says in his letters, he draws from uh, his gospel, right? So go over to John 15 and note this. This is also supporting everything we've been saying. John 15, uh, 13 and 15 it is, the verses we want, 13 and 15. Who wants to read? Uh, go 12, go 12 to 15. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. So as John says, you know, the friends greet you. This is what he's referring to. The friends are the household of God. But notice also, and you know, Jesus calls them friends. John calls them friends. Uh, but these are the ones who are going out. They're laying down their lives for others. So they're, they're loving God. They're loving each other. They're laying down their life. They're denying their life. They're taking up their cross and they're following Christ, essentially. So again, it comes back to the, 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 the contrast between Gaius and Demetrius and the other one, whereas they're doing that, and the missionaries, of course, they're doing that. And of course, John, I mean, he, he, he was banished for doing that. 
Uh, so these are the ones who are living for Christ. They're sacrificially living for others, whereas, of course, the other is not. Therefore, he would not be categorised as a friend of Christ. Where John says, you are my friend if you do what I tell you. But he's not doing what he's been told. Therefore, he is by default not a friend of God. And it's really, you know, doing that that is by the power of the Spirit. So it's just proof of. It's not like an actual choice. Well, it is a choice. <laughs> it's always a choice. Yeah, but it's... So under the sovereignty of God, we have free will. So there's choice. God is still sovereign, but in his sovereignty, he's given us free will. So there's choice. We choose. We choose. Again, we come to that, back to that critical verse in um, chapter 2, verse 24. We're compelled to. We are compelled. If you have the Spirit, yeah, John says, you know, when you've got the Spirit, you no longer sin. It's, it's no longer your desire to sin. It's a sin. So the, the closer you get to God, the more you become like Him, the more you imitate Him. Yeah, yeah that's true. And so and, and when, you, when, you're having a, when you're struggling with sin... That's a, that's a that's a um, an indicator that you actually there's too much world in you. Yeah. So you need to so the word there consecration means separation, separation from the world. You need to be consecrated. You need to come away from the world. You need to say, hey, you know. And we've all got areas we were dealing with, and that's the whole Paul was struggling with it. You know, he's, he, he said in Romans seven, there's also like Philippians three. You know, Philippians three, where he talks about you know he's still striving. He's still he's still you know, pressing on towards the goal, and, and he looks back and goes, oh, I, I don't the things that I've done, whether good or for bad, I, I count as nothing. Uh, I'm moving forward, you know. So again, a great verse to to, to sort of um, end on, where is uh, Paul, Paul wasn't getting caught up and condemned over where he's blinded, but he also he also wasn't getting puffed up and prideful mm. over the things he'd done well. He's saying, okay, that was yesterday. Today's a new day. Today's a new day. So we come back to that. I love that verse. It's, it's, it's said many, many times. Um, well, that saying it's been said many times throughout the scripture. You know, um, you know it talks about uh, God's 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 um, grace is new every morning. You know, His, His mercy is new every morning. So God's mercy is new every morning. So every morning, you know, it's like okay, whatever happened yesterday, that's done and dusted. Today's a new day. His mercy is new every morning. All right, why don't we end on that? Um, so that's the uh, that's the close of the letters of John um, next week uh, we're um, in um, Sharon's favourite part of the Bible the Old Testament the Old Testament and from next week we're going to start a new series and where is it Sharon? Yeah, we are doing Joel, the book of Joel new series, book of Joel and you will like it Sharon, you will love it you will absolutely love it lots sure of good stuff numbers? Something really good, like you know. I was thinking of Leviticus, oh, and we can do it. Oh my God! I think I do. We, you we want can... anyone to come? <laughs> you will love the Book of Joel. Joel's yeah, amazing. Yeah, but Joel's. I, I think it's you know it's important specifically. Um, you know, as the time grows near, we need to make sure that we're spending time on those eschatological books that are really pointing uh, at the things to come. You know, just reminding us, hey, you know, we are living at the end. We are living in the end. Jesus is coming back, and we're expecting him. You know, come back soon and we need to be looking for him, we need to be living for him essentially we need to be ready uh, so it's good to uh, give us a quick refresher on that, there's lots of good stuff in the book of Joel, uh, lots of references to um, the book of Revelation of course, so we'll be spending time in both and of course some of the other um, um, specifically the, the, the minor prophetic books um, yeah, and we'll be three, bouncing around. three chapters isn't it so it might take us six months yeah I, I'm thinking at least six months <laughs> yeah I'm thinking yeah yeah, give or give, give or take. Um, I try my best. to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to get some prayer. Have we got communion? Are we got communion? Okay. Um, so guys online, um, thanks for uh, tuning in. You're welcome to join us anytime. If you want to be baptised, uh, we're having a baptism on the second of um, April. In fact, we've got a late comer as well. She wants to get baptised on the fifth of April, so we might be doing two. Mm, no. And. Uh, in the canal, yes, yeah. with the mud crabs. So, yeah. so that'll be the test. If, if you're really, if you're born again, <laughs> you are, oh, because no snake or stalk him will harm you. Oh, oh, my but gosh. if you get stung by something, well then, you know what? 
Yeah. You're out. Okay, you're out. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the last time, the last, I oh, know, a few times back, I baptized someone in my pool, and um, and the pool turned green from the sin. <laughs> and I could never get it back. So now we do it. Is now. that why you refinished it? <laughs> yeah. All right, close online. Until next time, we're blessed. All right. So, fine. <laughs>